God's being is your being. Now, what does that mean? Well, the first thing we have to talk about is, is God a being? Growing up, this is what I believed, that God was a deity, a being, a mega being that, that was located somewhere up there like in the sky, you know, up there in heaven. And I was this separate entity, and so the whole point of my faith, the whole point of my spirituality, was to try to get this being who was up there somewhere to come down and bless me, or it was centered around getting to heaven so that, so that I could be with this being after I died for eternity. That was the, the essence of, of my spirituality. It was based on, it was, it was uh, yeah, it was based on separation on distance and it was an infinite distance between me and God's being there was my being there was your being and then there was God's being and there's just all these billions of beings and then the one mega being was pretty much how I believed but if God is infinite which is the claim which is what people will say right God is infinite God is beyond anything we can think or imagine. God is omnipresent. Then, but let's stick with infinite. If God is infinite, what does that mean? Well, the word infinite means boundless, limitless, everywhere, everything. If as soon as as soon as you make something with some kind of like boundary line to where you can say that it this is this and it's not that then whatever it is that you're referring to that you're talking about is no longer infinite it becomes finite and so when we talk about God as an as infinite being what we're talking about or what I'm talking about now is not not this being not a deity in the clouds but being itself. And so non-duality teaches that there, there is no such thing as these separate like entities or beings that we think, that we perceive through the finite mind. And that being is singular, meaning there is only one being and all of us collectively share in that being. And that being itself, not a being, but being is God you can replace that word being with consciousness or awareness there's there's different words all of them ultimately fall short because we're talking about that which is ineffable beyond words beyond description beyond the conceptualization of the mind but th this being once again is not something that we can that we can box in to a particular theology or religion and say this is exactly what it is because it's infinite. It, God is everything and nothing. God is not a thing. Uh, another way of saying it is God does not exist, but God is existence itself. And we all share in that one existence, in that one life, collectively. So, to say that God's being is your being, it, it's not to say that you are God, because when, when a lot of people hear that, because a lot of people, because most people think of God as a being, as a deity, who is sitting up in the heavens on a throne, they think, they think that's an absurd comment to make, to say that your being is God's being or that you and God are one because because of their understanding of God they're taking that statement that comment and they're viewing it through the lens of God being this mega being this king who's up there on a throne in the clouds right and it just doesn't make sense it sounds very blasphemous right but that's not what I'm saying and that's not what 
non-duality is is teaching or you know this is this whole idea of god being being itself the ground of being consciousness itself is a very ancient teaching it it, it dates back probably i don't know maybe almost 3,000 years ago, because I'm thinking of Vedanta, the Vedanta tradition, the Brahman, Atman. I mean, that's like, I mean, that's centuries before we have uh, Christianity or um, the the understanding of, of God as this, um, again, like a monarch on a throne, some kind of deity in the clouds. And of course, you know, people have viewed God differently. And if we if we look back in history, we can definitely see that. But one of the oldest schools of thought, one of the oldest philosophies in, in human existence, being the Vedanta tradition, their understanding of God, which they wouldn't even call, they wouldn't, the, the name God itself falls short because all names fall short. Again, it's it's beyond words, it's beyond thought, beyond the finite mind. But when they would when they would speak of Brahman, Brahman is the infinite source of everything, and Brahman is in everything. Brahman is consciousness. It's awareness. It's infinite consciousness. It's that which we are all connected to. It's it's what holds all things together. Uh, this this belief this model also uh, says that consciousness is fundamental and and what does that mean well it means that everything that we're experiencing matter and the forces of the universe come from consciousness or or they're arising within consciousness whether rather than the other way of, of viewing it or the other way of saying it the other perspective which is that consciousness is something that is coming or something that arose from matter or something that is coming from the mind but that belief puts matter puts the material world before the creation of consciousness but that's not what ancient spirituality that's not what the Vedanta Vedanta tradition teaches in the Vedanta tradition Brahman consciousness is fundamental is everything and everything that we're experiencing through our five senses all of matter all of the apparent separation which is maya in sanskrit the illusion of separateness is arising from the one from this infinite sea of pure consciousness and fundamentally that is what we are we are not the body we are not the mind we are not the ego we are what's aware we are pure consciousness and i made a a, a video about this not too long ago so when we say god's being is your being we have to keep that in mind like i'm not talking about god in the sense of a deity or some kind of character some kind of separate being i am talking about being itself, consciousness itself, awareness itself. And if through meditation, if you begin to go within yourself, as you begin to know thyself, what you eventually find is that what you are, this is what St. Francis of Assisi said. He said, what we are looking for is what is looking. Rumi uh, said you are what you seek so in meditation what you end up discovering is that you are searching for God out there somewhere you are searching for God in some kind of church or some kind of religion or some kind of holy book or through some kind of pastor who is supposedly anointed or something you're, you're searching for God externally but when you go within what you find is that what you are looking for is what is looking what does that mean that means that god is consciousness and you are that it doesn't mean that you the ego are god what it means is that fundamentally if you go within yourself and you you really 
go through that I am I, 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 I talked about and this was in that same video that I had mentioned earlier I think the title of it was you are never born and you never died talking about the eternal essence of who we really are the I am presence the pure consciousness itself but if you sit with that if you go within and you begin to experience that it's not something that you can know intellectually it's, it's an experiential uh, knowledge it's not intellectual knowledge know thyself you find that you are what you are looking for and or you find that whatever you've been searching for outside your outside of yourself is actually within you and this is what so many of the greatest saints and mystics and teachers and sages have been saying right and we can find all these great quotes about them pretty much correcting the audience that has been searching and seeking God outside of themselves and saying hey it's all within go within and we can find this teaching in just about every one of the contemplative traditions of the world religions and one of them like I mentioned earlier is the Vedanta tradition the Brahman Atman self-realization what is self-realization well in Vedanta the self capital S is not the egoic separate entity self the the Atman capital S is the pure consciousness it's the divine in you it's the I am in you it's the you that is never born and never dies it's the eternal self the timeless self and that's what self a lot of people when they hear self-realization especially if they're in some kind of like fundamentalism they think that that's a very egoic thing and again this goes back it all goes back to perspective right like when we start talking about we are one with god god's being is our being uh self-realization if your perspective if your belief about god is god is a separate distant deity something outside yourself then that comment that statement is, is going to come across as very arrogant and prideful and blasphemous like i said but if god is something much more than that something beyond being but being itself then it becomes beautiful and it makes a lot of sense and it is the most liberating realization one one can experience one can have because through religion especially through fundamentalism we spend our whole lives trying to find God trying to attain some kind of spiritual status trying to get to heaven trying to be saved trying to be holy trying to be all these things and the reality of it is that we've always had we've always we've we have always been what we've been seeking what we've been searching for there's nothing that we can do and there's nothing that we can't do to somehow either attain the our, our true self or lose our true self the the true self the eternal self which is consciousness itself i am this god's being it it is eternal meaning it, it's beyond time so there there's no time where it starts and there's no time where it ends the body has a birth and a death but who you really are is beyond the body it's what's aware of the body and again this essence this true essence of the self can be experienced can be known experientially through meditation and that's why I'm, I'm always talking about meditation that's why in all the contemplative traditions uh, all the mystical traditions of of the different religions the 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 the, the basis the, the the main the foundation of their spirituality is always always goes back to meditation because through meditation we realize the self we realize this oneness this this unity consciousness with our being and God's being and all of a sudden the perception of there's two separate beings there's God's being and then there's my being begins to dissipate into divine union and that's what the mystics call it the Christian mystics 
like Meister Eckhart. He talked a lot about that. He has a quote, too, where he talks about, like, leaving God for God, where he basically says, and I don't remember exactly the quote, but he basically says, you know, if you really want to experience God, you have to let go of everything that you've been taught about God, everything that you think about God. You have to unknow, you have to unlearn. And then when you get to that point of unknowing everything, unlearning everything, that is when through the experience of no thought, which is big in Zen Buddhism, you come to the realization beyond the finite mind that you are, that God's being is your being. You are it. You are what you've been seeking. And that is the, the deepest essence of all the contemplative and mystical traditions. That's the great liberation. That is the, the ultimate realization. So the reason I'm talking about this is because the, the point of me making this video is to just bring some clarity in what I'm talking about when I talk about God and when I talk about self-realization or oneness or God's being is your being. I'm not talking about a distant deity in the clouds. I'm talking about being itself, and it's something that we are not separate or distant from. It's something that we are one with. If we go within, we find that there's a, there's a sea of consciousness. There's one consciousness, and we all share in that one consciousness, and that is who we really are. That is the true self. That is the supreme identity. That is the Brahman Atman. That is, the, there's so many words for it, but again, ultimately all words fall short because we're talking about that which transcends all thoughts and words. And that's why I, I always bring up the, what, what they say in Zen Buddhism what they say is is all the words, all the names, all the symbols, all the myths, all the uh, labels that we assign to ultimate reality, to God, which God is, again, just another name, is the finger pointing to the moon. It's not the moon. It's pointing to the moon. And with that in mind, with that awareness, we can literally practice all these different contemplative traditions through different religions through different traditions and still come to that same realization now each tradition is going to be different and that's what makes that's what makes it beautiful you know there, there there's many differences and there's there's different uh practices and there's different tradition and there's different history there's different names there's different myths that each tradition has that makes each tradition unique but ultimately if you get to the core through the contemplative branches of these various traditions it all leads to the same place all the different rivers are leading ultimately to the same ocean and that ocean is the infinite sea of pure consciousness which all of life everything that we can experience is arising from. Remember, consciousness is not this thing that has come out of matter, that's arising from the mind, from the brain. Consciousness is fundamental. Consciousness is God. God is consciousness. God's being is your being. And that is the greatest realization, that is the greatest truth one can have, one can experience. So, if you've been striving in some kind of religious practice to attain union with God, or to attain enlightenment, or to attain some kind of spiritual status, the good news is that, as Rumi said, you are what you seek. Rumi also said this, he said, how's it go? He said, I searched for God and found only myself. I searched for myself and found only God. 
And I'll leave you with that. I'll leave you with that quote to meditate on, to contemplate, and to know deep within your being that you and God are one. And if you can know that fundamentally, then that drives out all fear. I think that might be the perfect love mentioned in 1 John. Of course, there's so many different interpretations, but that's how I see it. I think the perfect love that drives out all fear mentioned in the book of 1 John is the knowing, is the awareness that God's being is our being and that there's only one being. Because when you experience that, when you know that, then there's nothing to fear fundamentally. You know that everything in this life is passing. Nothing's permanent. This too shall pass. But the essence of who you are is beyond all of that. Beyond the body, beyond the mind, beyond time, beyond space. It's eternal. And nothing can harm you the true self, who you really are. And to me, that's good news. So, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.